Welcome back to the second episode of our series looking at developing Game Boy games in C using the Game Boy Developer Kit. In this episode we're going to be looking at sprites, they're the kind of important part of your game. In my game, in Dino's Offload on Adventure, obviously our hero is a sprite, the dinosaur who jumps across the screen, but just as importantly, our enemies are the cacti and their sprites as well. Actually, if you're interested, we're actually creating a real physical copy of the game that we've created. You can see here it's in a reproduction cartridge, quite nice there, and has its own laminated label looking like the original Game Boy labels. If you'd like to get your own copy, they're very limited kind of run, please look in the link below and sign up to get more information about when they'll be available. But let's get on with today's. We're going to be looking at sprites, how you create them, how you animate them. Let's get going. <laughs> So before we get stuck into actually doing some sprite work, it's good to just look at the Game Boy hardware and what it actually supports. So really on the Game Boy, there's three different layers of graphics. So as you can see on the screen here, that there's three different layers. So if we start from the bottom, the one that's on the Game Boy itself, that's the background layer. So that's where you can draw all your backgrounds of your games. And the background layer works a little bit differently than some of the others, but one of the things obviously that you need to be able to do is you can scroll the background layer. The next layer up is the sprite layer, and that's really what we're going to be looking at today. This is where you'll put your characters in your game, whether that's your enemies or your hero. Now the sprite layer, again, is, is very special, very different than the others. You can only have a limited number of sprites. So you can have 40 sprites on the screen at once, but you can only actually have 10 that are overlapping in a horizontal row at once. Uh, but you're kind of limited by how much you can put on them, but you can move each individual sprite on the screen. So I can move my hero separate from my enemy, whereas when you're using the background layer, it all has to move in one go. And the final layer is the screen layer, and that's usually used for, like it is in this one, things like your high score or text that you're writing out to people on the screen. It's kind of split into those three layers. We're going to look at the sprite layer, as I say today. Okay, let's get stuck into starting our first sprite. So the program we're going to use to design our sprites is this, the Game Boy Tile Designer. It's a Windows program, so if you just download that uh, and unzip it, you'll find the GBTD file. Just run that and you'll get the Game Boy Tile Designer. Every Game Boy graphic layer, including sprites, uses tiles, and the tiles are 8 pixels by 8 pixels. So you can create a sprite that is just 8 pixels by 8 pixels, um, also in GBDK you can have sprites that are 8 pixels by 16 pixels, so twice as high, but you can also create bigger sprites and lots of games do this by combining together lots of tiles into what's called a meta sprite. And we're not going to look at that today, we're just going to look at a really simple 8x8 eight eight sprite. And so you can see here in Game Boy Tile Designer you've got your empty tile ready to go. So you can see down the bottom you've got four colours, this is your colour palette. So any one tile can only use four colours um, and you can set a different palette per tile that you're using and per sprite that you're using but on each one you can only represent four. So usually one of those on a sprite layer at least is a transparent colour. So the zero here, the white one, is transparent. Anything that's white will just be see-through and you'll be able to see through it back to the background layer behind it. So in this you can just select with your left mouse button which colour you want the left click to, to do, which would be here, and the right mouse button, you can select what you would want your left, your right mouse button to do. So if I just click that again, you'll see you've got white and black. So I'm going to draw a really simple character here just by holding down my right mouse button. You'll see as I'm drawing it, it's showing you a little preview to the right hand side of it over many, many tiles or over one tile. So I'm going to do a little character like this and he's going to have a kind of straight face. And then I'm going to use uh, a second colour here and use my left mouse button just to kind of colour in. She may well go for a lighter colour. Colour in the, the rest of the sprite so it's not transparent. Okay, that's your first sprite done. There are lots of other tools here. I could use the fill tool to do that. You can draw different things and do different things there, but the basics is pretty much what I've shown you there. And what we've done is created our first sprite in this zero slot here. So I'm gonna create one more sprite. So to do that, I just click on one and you'll see it clears again. Go backwards and forwards. And I'm gonna draw pretty much the same character again. So actually I can do that by just doing edit copy tile, edit paste, 
There you go. And I'm just going to slightly change this one, so I'm going to get rid of his smile. Oh, he's got a frown, I guess, and put a smile in. So you can see if I flip backwards and forwards, and that's what we're going to show in the tutorial in a bit, you can animate your character just by having two different sprites that you swap out. So once we've designed our sprites, we need to export them out into a C file for GBDK to be able to use. So if you go to File, Export To, you can set here where you want it to save it and what you want the C file to be called. So I've called mine Smiler Sprites. You have to select here from the type, the GBDK C file. Call it really whatever you want, and that's what the variable inside the C file will be called. The rest you can leave as default except for this one. So because we've got two sprites in our collection at the moment, we need to export from zero to one. So if I click OK on that, now all that will export the C file. So let's go and have a look at that. So in the Documents folder, you can see here if we just edit this file in Notepad, it's outputted two tiles, so two sprites in this case, and each one has a collection of 16 hexadecimal values. I'm not going to go in today into too much detail about what these values are. You don't really need to understand them to get started, but later on we might come back in another tutorial and help you understand really how these numbers represent the tiles that you have drawn in your tile designer. So now you've designed your tile file and exported it to a C file, we're actually going to use that in your program to display something on the screen. So if you haven't seen our first tutorial about how to set up your environment, installing Visual Studio Code and GDBK, please go and have a look at that first because we're just going to assume you know how to get an empty program like this up and running. And we're going to show you how to actually add your sprite in. So the first thing that we need to do is actually to copy and paste into the same directory as our main.c the file we exported, the smilersprites.c and the smilersprites.h. And so we're not going to go through the detail of those. You can just see that there is a variable in here called smiler. And that variable is a, an array, which is what these square brackets mean. An array is just a list with commas in the middle, an array of characters. So we're just going to use that C file in our the smiler sprites C file in our main file. So the way we're going to do that is the same way that you did includes of the standard Game Boy Developer kit files. So we'll copy one of these files. It's very similar, but instead of using these angled uh, brackets like that, we're just going to use single quotes. And we're going to type the name of the file, the C file. So smiler sprites.c. So that means that all the code from Smiler Spikes will get included into our main file and be available to use. So we can use the variable that's in here, this Smiler variable, when we need to. So the next step is to write this line. I'm just going to paste it in so you don't have to watch me type. And what this is, is it's calling a Game Boy Developer Kit method called set sprite data. And what it's saying is it wants to start um, loading data from Smiler, which is, remember, this is the name of our variable over here, the array. And it's saying load the start at zero, so start at the first tile that's inside that Smiler array, and I want you to load two tiles from it. And that's what we've got. We've got two tiles that we designed in the tile designer. So that's all that does, it just loads into the sprite memory these two tiles ready for us to use. The next line here is basically creating your first sprite. So it's saying it's set sprite tile. And the sprite that we're setting it for is the zeroth tile, so the first sprite. And it's saying that you should set it to the first sprite that's in the sprite data in memory in the program. So because we loaded in two here, it's saying first sprite, load from the first tile in our sprite data. So that's kind of loaded everything into that. So the next line we're going to do is to move our sprite so again, using a method that's built in, move sprite, we're moving sprite at index zero, so the zero sprite, we're moving it to 88 and 78 on the screen. So 88 across and 78 down on the screen. Now, that code so far won't actually show anything on the screen because we haven't asked the Game Boy to show sprites. So we're going to do what's called setting a flag next. 
So we write to show sprites, it's all in uppercase like this, and it's a kind of built-in uh, method that's called to tell the Game Boy that's turn on sprites, put a colon in the end, save all that, and now we should actually be able to see a sprite on the screen. So if we just go back to our terminal at the bottom here, like we had last time, you can go view terminal, and we're just going to run our make.bat file, which is the thing that actually compiles the code. So dot backslash make.bat. If everything runs through, you should just see these two lines without any errors, and then we should be ready to run it. So open up the BGB emulator that you installed in your first episode. Go and find the ROM that you've compiled. And there we go. There's our sprite in the middle of the screen, or roughly in the middle of the screen. So that was all the code we needed to load up data into our sprite memory, create a sprite and tell it which tile to use, and then to move the sprite onto the screen. So now I'm just going to show you a really quick animation where we can flip between those two different sprite tiles that we generated. So we're going to need to write a little bit more code here and adapt this code to do that. So we're going to start by creating what's called a game loop. This is something that's in lots of games, and especially Game Boy games. And what we're going to use is a function in C called while, and it will carry on executing any code we put in this while um, section inside this here until what's inside these brackets is no longer true. So I'm just going to say while one. So one is always, it's never going to stop. So it's going to carry on looping this forever. And most game loops just carry on looping forever like this. So inside here, we're going to do something that actually changes the sprite backwards and forwards. So currently our sprite at zero is using the tile at zero. So we're going to switch between the tile at zero in the sprite data and the tile at one, and then it should flip over. So we need to have some way of knowing which it's currently on. So we're going to create a new variable. And that variable type is going to be a uint8. What that is, is it's an unsigned, hasn't got a plus or minus sign. It's an integer, so it's a single number, not decimal place or anything. And it's going to use up eight bits in our memory. So we're going to call that um, current sprite index. And we're going to set it to zero. And you have to do that at the beginning of your method. You can't do it down here. So do that and just save it. The space is just to make it readable. Now inside our while loop, we're going to check what the current sprite index was last time we set it. And we're going to change it to the other one. So it flips backwards and forwards. So we're going to use an if function. So if current sprite index. And we're going to say if it equals zero, so double equals is when you're comparing something. So if it equals zero, then we want to change it over. So we want the current sprite index to be one. And here we're using a single equals because we're setting current sprite index to equal one, not comparing it. Uh, and then we want to set it to zero if it isn't currently zero. So we're going to use an else here. Again, we're going to do current sprite index equals zero. So if it's already zero, it will make it one. If it's one, it will make it zero. And that's all we need to do to be able to flip it around. So now what we need to do is take our set sprite tile, copy that, put it inside here. And rather than setting it to zero and zero, we're going to set this second one, which is the tile it's using to current sprite index. So it will keep changing backwards and forwards. So our loop will carry on going, keep checking every time, flipping that variable backwards and forwards, and then the set sprite tile will change the zero inth sprite to be current sprite index in the sprite data. Hopefully you can kind of follow that. If I run that at the moment, it would change very, very fast because the CPU and the Game Boy would be able to loop through that many, many times a second. So we're going to use the delay function to leave it on the screen a little bit longer. So delay is a built-in function again. It's not really milliseconds because it's kind of CPU cycles, but I'm going to set it to a thousand, which is a reasonable period of time. So you say delay, you open your brackets, you give it how long it should pause for, and then put a semicolon on the end. So if we save that, and again, we run it, and go to our emulator, reload the ROM, you'll see our smiley face changes into our kind of frown, backwards and forwards. So that's how you animate a simple sprite, changing it between two different sprites. So we're going to try and move it a little bit 
So each loop round we're going to get to move on the screen. So we can use a different method than move sprite. Move sprite's great for setting something's initial position or jumping it around the screen. But if you want to move it across the screen or up and down the screen, then use scroll sprite. Open brackets, tell it which sprite, so the zero sprite, and then tell it that you want to move it either horizontally or vertically. So we're going to use horizontally and we're going to move it by uh, 10 pixels each horizontal, each loop through the game loop. We're not going to move it in height at all. So if I just click save on that and rebuild, I'm just pressing the up arrow to bring that back each time. If I reload this here, you'll see as it loops through that it's both animating and moving across. And it's actually going to move off the screen in a minute and disappear for a bit. And the reason for that is I've got nothing in checking that it's reached the edge of the Game Boy screen. But actually, when you're rendering on the Game Boy, you can deliberately render it off the edge of the screen. So this is a little tool that's built in here under Other VRAM Viewer. And it shows you the video RAM that's being used. Here we are, it's back on the screen here. So the reason was that the black bit is the actual screen on the Game Boy, and everything outside of that you can draw to, either background or screen or sprites, but it won't be visible on the screen. So it's just about to come off the edge of the screen kind of here, and then it's going to move 10 pixels at a time across here till it loops. Now obviously the way to stop that would be to check whether it's got to the edge, to have some variable that's keeping track of where it is, and then to reset it or to make it bounce back. But I'm not going to show you in that. You can kind of try that out for yourself as the next kind of thing you play with. But you can see relatively easy how we can both animate a sprite and how we can move it across the screen. So that's the end of this short tutorial on sprites. Please make sure you subscribe and come back and see the next episode, which will be with you soon. Bye for now.